Hello my dudes and welcome back to Enchant the World All the Mods 9 Magic Mods. Last episode we got our Drigme No Kill Mob Farm set up and between then and now what I've done is decorated the room, made it look all nice and swish. So let's jump in and take a look. Oh yeah, so things are pure gravy in this room now. Look at this. So basically we decided to hang the containment jars from chains from the roof. I think it's a nice touch and it gives us loads more room as well around the bottom of the floor to have more jars when what what why are there eggs appearing all around this room it's nuts somehow the chicken over here tosses eggs out of the containment jar all around the room it's nuts but yeah anyway in the chest you go so yeah there's loads and loads of room here for extra jars like one two three four five six seven eight at least also, these birch tables can hold jars. You know, we can get loads and loads and loads of them in here. And also, this chest is now hooked up to the storage lectern on the floor below. So we have access to all of those lovely things that we've gathered from the mobs. Now, I don't know exactly what we're getting from the wandering trader or his llama friend over here. Where is it? There he is. But we have quite the range of booty. Look at this. So all of the wilden drops are on farm, great stuff. We've also got, most importantly, blaze rods and ender pearls now on farm. That's amazing. And also leather and feathers, which are quite annoying to farm, are also on farm as well. We're getting bones from the wither skeleton over here. There he is, little dude with a sword. But also we're getting these skull fragments, which we can turn into skulls. Oh yeah, spooky scary skeleton. We'll chuck that back in here and wait for that to brew because this hasn't been running for too long, only while I was decorating this room. So if we leave it in the background, we should get loads of stuff. Now, talking about things that have been left in the background, we're gonna jump out the window now, Superman style, over to the mystical agriculture setup. Because this episode, what we're gonna be doing is going on a mega magical mining, what's a word for adventure that begins with M? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section if you know, but we're gonna find my spell book now. Where is it? There we go. Engage Mage Leap and whoosh! Down we go! Oh, I love that! To the Mystical Agriculture setup. So this has been running in the background. We've kind of been going Ars Nouveau crazy these past few episodes. And that's been amazing. That's been fun. Let's get rid of that Death Marker. That's a bit ugly. It's been amazing. Ars Nouveau is a beautiful mod that we've had a lot of fun checking out. But while we've been doing that, we've been farming up some Inferium Essence. Now, some is an understatement, because look at this. This chest has two stack upgrades tier three, and what that means is this thing stacks up to 4,000. What that means is we've got four, eight, 16, 24, 32, 33, 30, 34,000 Inferium Essence. And if that's not enough to get a Master Infusion Crystal, I don't know what is. Now, what's making that noise? Oh, it's a bear. Oh, hello, Mr. Bear. So we've got what we need to make the Master Infusion Crystal. In terms of essence, at least, what we're lacking, though, is Prosperity Shards. That was always going to be the sticking point. So what we're going to do this episode is configure our gear to make us the perfect Magical Miners. So how are we going to become amazing Magical Miners? Well, number one, we're going to be upgrading our gear. In the computer, I guess, somewhere, we have the gold armor that I got from the Apotheosis mobs. So yeah, we'll take this out and take a look at all of these loots that I found. Now, gold armor is the base for our current set, and there's some pretty cool stuff here. The boots and the legs have some crazy stats that's going to be really good for us to put on. The chest has kind of nothing on it, and the helmet has Tombstone Soulbound, which is kind of pointless. All that means is when we die, we keep it on us rather than having to go back to our grave. But it doesn't apply to all of our stuff, so it's not like keep inventory, so it kind of sucks. So we're going to make ourselves our own unique set of golden helmets and chest plates using the Ars Nouveau enchanting system. So how does Ars Nouveau enchanting works? Well, just like uh, in Minecraft, you can put enchantments on items. That's pretty cool, right? Let's go down here to the crafting floor. We can also put enchants on pieces of gear that we have on us. So we'll show you how that works now. Basically, you have to rank them up. You have to put a tier one enchant on an item. 
then you go to tier two, and then you go to tier three. It's a little bit more complicated than vanilla crafting, but what it does mean is you can cherry pick the exact right enchantments that you want on your specific gear. Now we're looking for enchantments that are gonna make mining easier for us. So things that give us more mana to cast Touch Dig and those spells are gonna be pretty huge. Fortune would be great, but we can only put that on a pickaxe and we're gonna use Touch Dig, so it won't really apply. But having epic mana regen would really help. So mana regen is a really simple enchant to do. Source berries, source gem blocks and lapis. So we'll go and grab all of those things that we need. So to get mana regen level one on a piece of armor, we put uh, two source berries, two blocks, and two blocks. So that's two source blocks, two source berries, and two blocks of lapis lazuli. Then we put the chest piece in the middle. This will take some source, 20%, but it's well worth it because this is gonna put mana regen level one on the chest plate. This time it's the same stuff, but also abjuration essence. So down with the source blocks, down with the blocks of lapis, down with the blocks of source berries, and then upstairs to grab ourselves some abjuration from the essence floor. And there we go, seven abjuration essence in here. We could probably just loot all of these. So the abjuration essence as well, and that should, oh no, we have to put the armor back in to reinitiate the craft. Okay, well that's fair enough. Here we go. Oh my god, now this was a big, this was a big enchant. This cost way more source. So as you can see, now this chest plate has mana regen 2. Crazy. But we don't want to stop there. We can go to mana regen 3. 3 abjuration essence, 2 source blocks, 1 lapis, 2 source breeze. It's so simple, so easy. Enchanting with the enchanting apparatus, well, it kind of feels like maybe it's what it was designed for. So now we have the Mana Regen 3 chest plate. We can use this instead as a base in the enchanting apparatus to make our sorcerer's wraps. Just need some Mage Bloom fiber now. And what this is going to do is it's a great way, like you can also find armor like we have with the Apotheosis stuff. That's probably the better way of doing it because this armor that can drop from these bosses is nuts. But for now, we just want some Mana Regen specifically to make our mining expedition easier. So Mage Bloom Fiber around the edge, the enchanted golden chest plate in the middle, and this is going to be a great base for our new Sorcerer's chest plate. Yes, and let's take a look. Yeah, so here we go. It's Retained Mana Regen 3. That's great news. We'll toss some Mage Bloom around the edge, upgrade with the other gold armor, and yeah, I'll come back to you once we have our new set. There we go, and the all-important green dye, of course. Let's put this stuff back on. Oh yeah, now we're not touching the hat. The hat we're gonna worry about later. We're also gonna put some spell thread on this stuff because we've got lots and lots of spell thread. Also, can we upgrade this now to level two? You know what, I think we can. Oh my God, yeah, we've got Blaze Rods on farm. Let's get the Sorcerer's Wraps up to level two. This is gonna give us more mana regen, way more max mana, but it does keep the same armor levels. To get to tier three, however, we're gonna need some chorus fruit, and we haven't been to the end yet, so that's a bit beyond our means. So next up, spell thread. We wanna make our armor even more mana efficient, so we're gonna try and put some spell thread on this stuff. We're gonna need way more mage bloom fiber, I reckon. How do you make spell thread again? It's pretty simple. Yeah, just gold ingots and mage bloom fiber. So chuck this in the computer, get the gold. Boom, and we're gonna make, oh yeah, eight blank threads. So what kind of spell thread do we want? What's gonna make things better for us to mine with? So we're gonna want repairing, we're gonna want high step, no. Undying, ooh, that's a bit expensive. Looting isn't really important now because we use a Drigme to do all of the looting of the mobs we find. Also, we don't have a rabbit's foot. Starbuncle, though, will give us 20% speed. That sounds pretty good, so we'll make one of those. So yeah, mana capacity looks like the big one and the Starbuncle. So we're gonna get loads and loads of mana capacity. We're gonna be mages that are brimming with magical power. Right, so here we go. We've got seven spell threads because we've got seven slots on our gear. We're gonna start with the big ones first on the chest piece. 
So the chess piece on the right. So for the third slot, we're going to go with the threat of the Starbuncle. That's going to make this thing give us three times Starbuncle speed. That's 20% for every level. So we're going to go 60% faster. That's crazy. Then we're going to use Magic Capacity. That should be really good. And let's see what this nets us now. Whoa, yeah, look at this. So plus 60 max mana, plus 20% max mana, 8 mana regen, and 60% speed. Oh my god, look at this. We are speed demons. Oh wait, look at this. You have equipped armor that contains a perk you already have. You will only receive the effect once. Right, so thread does not stack. That's interesting. So what we want to do instead is make sure that the repairing glyph is the second tier 2 one we have. But we want tier 3 magic capacity, so we'll remove that from the chest piece at tier 2. There we go. Like that. And that's one of everything, but word to the wise, don't bother making more than one spell thread, because apparently these stats do not stack. Now let's take a look at our spells. That's the armor setup sorted. We run like demons now. Is there a way we can augment our Touch Dig? Well, number one is Touch Dig. Now, Touch Dig is great for getting specific ores. Projectile Dig is great for getting ores that are on the roof, Range Dig. What we want to do now is more like a hammer kind of spell, something that clears out loads of blocks in front of us very quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Touch, Break, then we're going to give this AoE. And what this lets us do is a couple of AoEs to give it like a big radius. What this lets us do is create like a massive tunnel. It's going to be really good for strip mining. So do you know what? I feel like we're ready. We've got our spell book. We've got our bow somewhere. Where's the bow? The bow of legends. We've got food. We've got some source berries. We'll chuck some stuff in the computer because we want loads and loads of space for our mining expedition, obviously. Let's go and find ourselves some prosperity ore. Oh my god, Deep Slate Prosperity Ore, we already found this. So basically, yeah, you need an iron pickaxe to dig this. That's luckily Touch Dig. Oh my god, yeah, already we're finding the things we need so quick. Now, honestly, the problem with the thread that I have at the moment is I kind of run too quickly. I'm running so quick, it's difficult to control my actions. But you know what, we'll, we'll work with that. We'll, uh, we'll evolve, adapt, and overcome. Uranium? Who's, whose uranium is that? So we're on the hunt for several things. We definitely need some more lapis. We're running low on that. Prosperity Ore is a big one. We'll grab some of that. And it's quite actually easy to find. I'm finding a lot more than I was worried I would. Oh yeah, wow, there's loads of this in the walls. We're also running low on redstone, so if we see that, we're going to grab it too. Bit of range dig over here. Lovely. So what do you think is beyond this massive underwater lake? Well, let's go and find out. We'll reinitiate self-glow, get mage leap on the bar, and off we go. Yeah! Oh, hello, Lapis. Yeah! Oh man, this is going to make mystical agriculture so easy. It's so common. This stuff is like everywhere. Am I getting really lucky or are the drop rates changed? We are getting absolutely insane amounts of prosperity ore though. I was worried this stuff was going to be rare. What a fool I was. This stuff is all over the walls. We are dripping in it. What an amazingly successful mining trip. Now, we came out to test some other spells as well. Let's try our dig hammer. Here we go. So we right click with this and it creates a big old hammer sized hole. Oh yeah, look at this. And my mana regen is so good that I can kind of spam this pretty consistently. Redstone, don't mind if I do. Monster box, we will not touch that. Oh, hello, diamonds. Skelly bones. Bam. Oh my god, so the bow also has move speed. So when I have this equipped, I run at an insane, an insane speed. Uh-oh, pillagers. But we don't need to worry, really, because we can outrun absolutely everything while we're holding this bow. 
Oh my god, look at the speed! This is insane! Take some of that redstone, excuse me. Just basically ignore these dudes, they can't hit me. I'm too quick, I'm like Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, they do hit me every now and again. Ooh, what's this over here? We'll just explode this guy, because we don't care. Looks like some chests. Oh, diamond pickaxe, very cool. Load up our backpack with all of this booty. And there we go, diamond pickaxe, bit of leather, won't say no to that. What's over here? Ah, uh, trash. Loot, don't mind if I do. Oh my god, gotta get out of here. Oh my god, okay, so what the problem is, is when I'm making myself glow, it's, it's really cool, right? I can see what I'm doing, it's amazing. But I'm not lighting up the area, so monsters are still spawning. I'm gonna have to spam some harm balls over here. Wait, is this a boss? I think this is a boss. Let's take him down. Oh man, he's quick, but I am way quicker. Oh, un until I fall in water. So we need to be spamming Mage Light. We need to change. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, wow. So you get like a. Ah, uh, oh, so if you hold down V, you can get like a spell wheel of all of the different spells you have. So yeah, let's loot this uh, area over here. Because there's something cool going on in here. And look at this bounty. There's loads and loads of loot in here. Oh, that spider's stuck on the roof. Ripperoni and pepperoni, my friend. So we'll load up the backpack and let's see what's inside these chests because I think I saw. Yes, look at this. So what you can find out in the world sometimes are these very rare pre-configured spell books. These come with a spell that does something amazing. This is Poseidon's Refuge. Fire a body of water to create an ice bubble in the depths. So it's projectile sensitive, conjure mage light, burst AOE times two. Sensitive freeze break freeze cool So what I think this does is give you like an icy Sanctuary bubble that you can hide in underwater that looks like it has air in it as well and a light That's pretty cool. We'll take the lexica Britannia because we could need that a bag of seeds sounds fun Yeah, we'll take as much of this as we can because yeah, we never know what we're gonna need next loot chest Loads of stuff now. Honestly, we've got so much backpack space now We could probably just load up with everything a witch's hat sounds pretty handy Zombie hearts might be good. Condensed blood's gonna be very good. Smithing templates, enchanted tablets, and scrolls could come in handy because Corail Tombstone is certainly a magical mod. Mana Steel, though, we'll definitely use. Name tags, enchanted scrolls, dragon breath scroll, all of this in the backpack as well. Man, we are getting loads of loot, but so much loot that we're running out of space already. So while we're out and about, let's see if we can track down a few more diamonds. They're also pretty valuable to find. Once we get our Master Infusion Crystal, we will definitely be able to get some diamond seeds because, oh my god, we are less just like having crazy amounts of Prosperity Shards. Light up the world. There we go. Lights everywhere. Oh my god, I, I want to stop mining, but I, I just I just can't. It feels so good to run around at like breakneck speed, mining stuff on the roof. It's just so powerful, so easy. Oh, I'm a man possessed. I love mining. That's why I love Minecraft. So we are sitting on 243 prosperity shards. If that isn't enough to realize all of our dreams, I don't know what is. I'm going to contain myself. I'm going to show some discipline and stop pressing touch dig. Stop mining and uh, get myself home because, oh my god, we are dripping in loot. Wait, just a couple more. A little bit more redstone. Why not? A little bit more redstone. You know, I can do a little bit more. You know, No, no, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. And here we go into the computer with all of our ill-gotten gains. I want to count up all the diamonds I got in a second because I think it's going to be an impressive amount. We got loads and loads of magical scrolls. Lots and lots of loot from golden chests around the world. Do you know what though? I want to go and check out Poseidon's Refuge. This is a pretty cool spell by the looks of things. I've got Mage Leap. I can go and find a body of water, no sweat. Let's find one over here because it might make things a bit dirty. Yeah, so Poseidon's Refuge. Let's give it a try. Cast this. Look at this. So this has created a little kind of igloo, which we can tunnel into 
And, oh yeah, look at this. Now it doesn't have much light inside, so we might want to like mage light it up. But that's a pretty cool spell. So if you're ever trapped underwater, just cast Poseidon's Refuge. I wonder if we cast it on ourselves, if it creates a little bubble. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, look at this. Yeah, so if you're ever drowning, boom, Poseidon's Refuge saves the day. Now, time to get out of here. All I've got to do now is try and get inside that window. It's not the easiest of things, though. Aiming my Mage Leap spell is pretty tricky. So, my friends, it's time to infuse the Master Infusion Crystal. That's what we're going for. We're going to add it over there on the left. We're going to need Prosperity Shards, Supremium Essence, Insanium Essence. To make these crystals, though, we need Inferium Gemstone, and that's a Prosperity Gemstone, which requires a diamond. So we are going to need these diamonds that we grabbed, and, oh yeah, look at this, we've got 17 of them. So here we go, once again we return to the massive mega chest, absolutely chock-a-block full of Inferium Essence. I mean, look how quickly this thing's filling up as well. One, two, three... You know, it's, it's getting loads and loads of Essence over time. This is a, a real cool setup. And let's see. So we need a Prosperity Shard here to make the Prosperity Gemstone. Then this is used to make an Inferium Gemstone. Put that there. This is used to make the Inferium Infusion Crystal. Now what we want to do is make as much Prudentium as we can. Although, do you know what, actually? What's going to make this much, much easier is transferring this into my backpack. Because we need the power of the computer to make automating this craft, like, much quicker. This might seem like it's a bit of an, uh, a bit of a chore, but trust me, this is going to make a lot of sense. And there we go, not all of the Inferior Essence brought over, but probably enough. And yeah, just using the computer interface is going to make all of this so, so, so much easier. So, Prudentium Essence, we're going to make as much of this as we can. So now we have 900 Prudentium Essence, but I think we're going to need a few more than that. Anyway, Prudentium Essence into... Tertium. And we'll make all of this into Tertium. All we want is enough for a Master Infusion Crystal, which actually costs... Insanium. That shouldn't be too tricky to get. We've got loads of Essence. We can get there for sure. It's just going to take us some time, you know? There we go. 15 Supremium Essence. <laughs> oh my god, this whole thing takes frickin' forever. But all we want is the Master Infusion Crystal. One crystal to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. To get that, you use the Supremium Crystal with Insanium Essence. The recipe for Insanium Essence is... How do you get Insanium? Right, yeah, four Supremium around the edge. So, Supremium... One, two, three, four... One... Oh my god, we're, we're missing some. Two... Oh, we gotta make more! We gotta make more Supremium! Oh, this is taking forever! Oh dear. Oh dear. Well, we're almost there. So, let's just get back to it then. So, Supremium. One, two, three, four. Come on. Luck be a lady. Four Insanium. This is it. The Supremium Infusion Crystal. Prosperity Shards around the edge. And... Oh my god, we did it. We've got the Master Infusion Crystal. One crystal to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. And it looks like we only really used around what, like 8,000 essence? So we're looking pretty good, that's less than half of what I was worried we'd need. So yeah, with the Master Infusion Crystal, we've got a lot of wasted crystals, but you know, whatever. It is whatever because we've got everything on farm. So you can use this to turn Inferium into Prudentium. Then we can use this to also turn Prudentium into Tertium. And all the way up the chain, we can get any essence we want at the touch of a button. Oh, yeah. So let's see. Prudentium essence. Let's just make a big old stock of loads of these. Because the big thing we want by the end of this episode is renewable diamonds. Everything else doesn't really matter. We can farm it all. 
but diamonds are the big one. Oh my god. So it's not as quick as other computer systems because I think it does rely on bookworms going backwards and forwards. So it's kind of laggy. This is taking quite a while just to fill up my pack. So we want to make diamond seeds. Diamond seeds. Here we go. This is the one. Now this needs Supremium Essence, one of the highest tiers that you can get. Not a problem. I hope I saved enough diamonds, actually. Eight. Yeah, we're in luck. So we'll put the diamonds there. We're looking for Supremium Essence. Yeah, look at this. Four. So we'll make eight of these. What other seeds can we make then from Mystical Agriculture? And this is where it's worth going into quests. In fact, I think we completed a load of Mystical Agriculture quests by just storming through all of this stuff. Yeah, Supremium Essence. Boom. We got an enchanted book. Pretty cool. We'll check out what's on that in a sec. And we also got Insanium. And we got an enchanted book. Wow, cool. And loads of XP. Oh my god. Mystical Enlightenment. Ender Dragons and Withers will drop Cognizant Dust when killed with an essence weapon. Cognizant Dust. What is that used for? Aha. So this is used in Awakening to make Awakened Supremium. Awakened Supremium is used to make a lot of really cool stuff. Like a Paxel that does 30 damage. Oh my god. The weapons Awakened Supremium gives you are crazy. A sword that does 29 damage less damage than a hoe. That's weird. Anyway, Mystical Agriculture is at our fingertips. But what seeds do we want to make? Well, we can also make... Hmm. Emerald. Platinum. Netherite. We'll need to find some netherite before we can do that, but that's definitely something I want to do. There's also Lapis, End, Osmium, Uranium, and Fluorite. Now, End seeds seem attractive because I believe we could use these to potentially make... Chorus Fruit. Yes, you can! Ah! So combining End Essence with Nature Essence gets you Chorus Fruit. We are going to need to go to the Ends to get End Stone, so it's kind of pointless. No, wait, we're not. So we can use Ender Pearls to make End Stone. Or we can use Conjuration Essence plus any old stone to make End Stone. Oh my god, so we found a way to get End Materials without ever actually going to the End. That's pretty exciting. Let's go and make some Diamond Seeds. Whoosh. Oh, I forgot. We need the Seed Base. So we want Prosperity Seed Base, which is why we've got loads of shards. We're going to make a couple of Diamond Seeds, because you know what? Why not? Oh no, we can only afford to make two, but even that's going to be enough. So, one, two... This doesn't have to be in any specific pattern. Apparently it can be in any old setup, but I like to keep things symmetrical. Because I'm slightly OCD. There we go! And the redstone torch underneath means it's always activated. Oh, we've done it! We've got diamonds! The power of the diamond in the palm of our hand. So we'll pick that up and make another one, because why stop at one diamond seed when you can make two? Seed base in the middle, and here we go! Now we're going to need the remaining Supremium Essence to make Supremium Farmland for these diamonds, and we're going to have to think about where we're going to put it. So we've got like stone and gold here. I reckon these pots right here are going to be ripe for diamonds. So there we go, the hoe, the dirt, Supremium Essence makes Supremium Farmland. Two of those for now, but going forwards, we're going to need a whole bunch more. Boom, let's get these plugged in. Now, two for now, just down here. Supremium and Diamond. And then Supremium and Diamond. Oh yeah, diamonds at the tips of our fingers, my lads. This is going to be incredible. It's going to take a while for these to bear fruit, but the fact that we can grow diamonds is insane. Well, it's Insanium, is what it is. Now, before we end this episode, there's one more cool thing I want to do if I can actually get inside this window. It's, it's a real... It's like throwing darts. It's like I'm a dart. I'm the human dart. Oh, my God. Like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, come on, get in there. There we go. Oh, man, I love this mod. I love this mod pack. We are becoming insanely powerful wizards. In just a few episodes, bam, we have become pretty freaking amazing. So what's cooler than a Starbuncle? Well, I'll tell you what's cooler than a Starbuncle. A Starbuncle that's wearing Starbuncle shades. Now, you can't give all of your Starbuncles these cool shades, because giving them these means they won't be able to pick up berries. And that sucks.
We also need tinted glass, but we've got loads and loads of amethyst, so that's not going to be a problem at all. So bam, a cool pair of Starbuncle shades. We're also going to take one of the things in here, a name tag. Now these are probably useful for a lot of things, but... So an anvil over here next to the scribes table, because why not? And we're going to put a name tag. Now, we need a name for our Starbuncles. So what I want you guys in the comment section to do is give me some names. And the highest rated, most thumbs up comments are going to be what we're going to be naming our Starbuncles. I am going to start the ball rolling by naming one of my Starbuncles. Now I'm trying to think of a name here. What's a cool name for a Starbuncle? Oh yeah, you know it, it's Jeff. Is that how you spell Jeff? I think it is. If it's not, then that's even funnier. So we're going to go and give this to one of our Essence Starbuncles, because these guys, they don't pick up berries, they just pick up essences and put them in the middle here. So here we go, my friend. You are going to be called Jeff. And Jeff is only Jeff when he puts on the shades. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this guy. The coolest Starbuncle on the planet. So we want a name for this other Starbuncle over here, but also the Starbuncles on the roof. So keep those names coming in in the comment section. I've been Shin. This episode, we've upgraded our armor to insane levels. We did some new spells, went on an insane magical mining trip. We are insane miners now. Gathering stuff is just, you know, effortless for us now. We went through the mystical agriculture chain to get the master infusion crystal. It's insanely powerful and definitely the first crystal you really want to go for because it makes everything else so much quicker. It's a bit of an ordeal, but we got there in the end. We also got diamond seeds, which are amazing. Next episode, hopefully that's going to have grown up and given us loads of renewable diamonds. Amazing. We got loads of other stuff while we were mining as well. So the world really is our oyster. Next episode, though, what we're going to be trying to do is get the materials we need need to upgrade our colony buildings, which means we're going to have to venture into the Twilight Forest. It's probably seen some upgrades since I've last been there, which hasn't been for literally years, but I can't wait to see what's inside the Twilight Forest. Now that we've got amazing armor and spells, I think we can conquer the Twilight Forest. No sweat. So we're going to be going through the whole thing from start to finish and looting the Twilight Dimension for all that it's worth. I've been Shin. A massive thank you for watching this episode. A huge thank you to my Patreon members and my subscribers. You guys really do rock. And until next time, take care.